and told me what central bankers are facing. They say that they want to fight inflation, but I think inflation is going to be more persistent. It's easy to cut it from 10 to 6 percent. Pushing it from 6 to 2 is going to be much harder because commodity prices are going to remain high, wage inflation is going to remain high, and services demand mostly labor. So I think that inflation is going to surprise on the upside, and then policymakers will have a tough dilemma. Either they really raise interest rates much more than, say, 5% for the Fed or 3% for the ECB, and then they cause a real hard landing, and they cause a financial crash with effects on equity market, bond markets, and credit markets, and a financial economic crash is going to feed off each other. Or, if, as I expect, they're going to blink and wimp out, then inflation expectations get de-anchored like the 70s, and then we end up with high inflation and still recession. Oh. So unfortunately, given the shocks, given the amounts of debts, them if you do, them if you don't. Is your preference to push back to 2% or to sort of wimp out somewhere around about 3.5%, 4% on inflation? I think that we have to push for 2% because once you wimp out, who knows that whether inflation is going to be stuck at 4% or 5 or 6 Once you have a de-anchoring of inflation expectations, like in the 70s, who could end up with double-digit inflation. But unfortunately, doing the right thing causes a hard landing and a financial crash. So we have to be aware of the cost of going to 2%. Do you foresee a really nasty hard landing? I do believe that it's going to be a hard landing, even if now markets believe in a soft or a softish landing because my view is that commodity prices are going to remain very high this year. You have the war between Russia and Ukraine, you have the Israel and Iran, you have the building tension between US and China. If China is going to grow faster this year, demand for commodities is going to be higher. And there has been a massive underinvestment in new capacity of commodity, not just in energy, green metal, industrial metal. So commodity prices, according to Goldman Sachs, this year could go up 43%. If that's true, then headline inflation and core is not going to go lower, it's going to go higher. I'm going to give you $1,000. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to go and spend it? Are you going to go and invest it? And if you do, are you going, what would you invest it in? Or are you going to take you and your friends out for a nice dinner? Well, it's better to save it and invest it rather than consuming it, given that debt ratios are high. When inflation is rising, like last year, you lose money on equities because the discount factor for equities is that the bond yield goes higher. But the higher bond yield implies that the price of the bond is lower. So last year, you lost more money on 10-year treasury, 20% price fall as the yield went from 1 to 3.5. than you did on the S&P 500, where you lost only 15%. So you lost money on your bonds, you lost money on your equity. If I'm right that the average inflation rate is not going to be 2%, it's going to be 6 the loss that you saw last year on bonds and equity is going to be more severe in the next few years to come. How do you hedge yourself? Short-term bonds, inflation index bonds, commodities and precious metals like gold, and sustainable forms of real estate that do well when inflation is rising. So you have to move away from traditional investments like bonds and equity towards stuff that gets you a hedge against inflation, the basement of fiat currency, social political and geopolitical risk, and even environmental risks. Will there be enough left over for an ice cream? <laughs> yes, you can have an ice cream, but better to save for more ice creams tomorrow than having oh. an ice cream today. <laughs> <laughs>